I've been looking into it. And um, one question that I had was, um, what's the best way to break into product management and get started? So you're basically uh, having a very respectful approach to telling me to go to the next slide. So let's do that. How to break into product. Thank you for that. So there's two different ways. So you, you're actually, you're CS in stats, right? And with a minor in business. So you would follow the first route right here. Um, and whereas like a lot of your peers, like Kiwi, um, would, would have a non-technical path. And let me tell you something. It's, it's very, very possible for people from both paths to break into product like within a year. Um, and it's so possible for both. There's so many opportunities and ways to do it that I wouldn't even say that one is more difficult than the other. Don't even worry about that. It's possible for everyone on this call to do it. Um, and we're going to get into an overview right now, since we don't have too much time remaining. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk about the overview and how I can kind of, um, give everyone a little bit of direction to like do a little bit of homework on their own and then further. Away. I can also come back to like a more in-depth um, thing on this where I can also walk everyone through how to make your resume more geared up for product and how to like also do really well in recruiter screens and, and separate yourself from like people that have prior PM experience. But basically let's get into like the really fundamental stuff of this. When you're technical, let's say like you're a software engineering intern, right? That's all you've done. And you want to break into PM. That's a jump because you don't have any PM experience. Well, what you've done so far is look at this. You've only done develop and test in your internships, right? You've just wrote code, wrote code, wrote code, and then maybe tested it, right? Um, you have a gap right here. This gap is the rest of the stuff that you need to do in order to have done the entire product cycle. When you've done the entire product cycle, your recruiters are much more comfortable giving you PM interviews, right? And then when you get all of those PM interviews, um, then you basically you know, have a much higher chance for getting an offer. It's basically like a whole shotgun approach. It's, it, it's like a, a game of numbers, right? So um, something I just wanted to mention is um, everyone's going to have this gap, right? Everyone's going to have this gap. No one's in the entire product cycle unless, unless you were an entrepreneur in the past and you've built your own product from ideation to launch. That, that's a hint right there. That's something that like everyone should do if they don't feel confident getting a bunch of PM interviews, right? And like, I, I know I'm just saying this like high level. What does it mean to like build my own product? I'll, one sec, I'll get, I'll get into that once I cover the second path. Second path, a lot of you, a lot of you like um, business majors or people that have done like business analyst, analyst roles or like, you know, product marketing roles or just like design, user research, um, different, different type of roles that are like non-technical. You've done a lot of the product cycle, actually, just like engineering. You've done like a lot of like core parts of the product cycle. You just haven't done all of it. You just need to bridge that gap and then you'll have the entire thing. It'll be easier for you to get PM interviews and then you'll get like eventually one PM offer, one minimum. How do you bridge this gap for both? What you do is you identify the parts of the product cycle you have not done. Let me go back to like the, the, the product cycle um, right here, right? Look at this. And this is something that like I'll send the video out afterwards. Just quickly jot this down. Have I done ideation? Everyone's basically done ideation. You can check this off. If you're a software engineering intern, have I done development tests? Yes, you have. Guaranteed have, right? Um, you, you've written code for any feature that your manager has asked you at work or even for like school projects, you can count that too, seriously. And then you've written test cases for it, right? Whether it be J unit tests or whether it be like a, a more involved type of testing, you, you've done this part of the product cycle, right? And have you designed the way that you're going to write the code? If it's a pretty large sizable coding project, yes, you've done that too. That counts. That counts. So you've done one ideation design two, and development test three out of like, uh, what is it? Six parts of the product cycle you're actually like pretty close to closing the gap. What do you do? You need to do user research. You can do a project of user research, just like where you just like literally go and survey people and interview people. There's a lot of classes that requires the survey. Boom, right there. You've done that part of the product cycle. And then you need to market something and launch something, right? Whether it be just like something you build, um, which is what I recommend. I recommend that technical and taught non-technical, just like build your own small product and go from ideation to launch. When you do that, what you can do is let's go back to here. You can list yourself as literally a product management intern at, and then the name of your startup, right? No one cares about like what, whether your startup's like the next Google or something or not. But recruiters say that you've been a product management intern and in there you can literally list, I've done everything from like ideation to user research to design to implement tests to marketing to launch. Look, wow, this person's basically done a P, been a PM in the past. I want to give them an interview. They forget about all of your past like pigeonholed CS experience, pigeonholed design experience. You've done like a, a, a PM internship most recently. That's what matters and that's what's going to get you um, those, those interviews, right? Once you're comfortable with like the entire product cycle, all it takes is a one little startup. It doesn't have to be a proper startup. Just build a product and get it to market. So, um, with that, 
I actually have to go in the next couple of minutes, unfortunately, but I'm open for a couple of questions. We are now in the Q&A part. I just had another question because like you were talking like about the product cycle to like fill the gap. Um, fill the gap. Yeah. I do have experience in each form of the product cycle, but it's not necessarily for the same product. Like, is that okay? For the most part, like I haven't seen a whole product go from like ideation to launch, but I have done like the marketing research and I have done like the coding for other projects. Does that still count? Like, is that still okay? Yeah, so that is okay. That is okay. Although it looks better if you have all of it compiled into one experience, which is like your own product that you've built. Um, and I would say that if you can't fill up all of the product cycle easily, just do your own thing, right? That, that's just like a quick crash course, but also highlight if, if when I say highlight, I mean like literally bold on your resume um, from like all these different experiences, the small parts of the product cycle that you've done, right? So if it's anything related to marketing, right? Like bold that word marketing, right? Or conducted user research or user interviews. That's really big. That's a key concept in product management. You want to bold that as well, right? Okay. Uh, I have time for about one more question. I think there's a couple of messages in the chat. Let me view what that is. You, you can ignore that. That was me talking Hello? to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, I just had a question when it came to uh, like customer research. Um, uh, one thing was some features when you're trying to add a new feature to a product, a lot of these features have conflicting views within even no matter how big the sample size is, they usually have, con uh, there could be a feature that has conflicting views. How do you deal with this kind of situation and how do you, uh, how do you, best, uh, you know, get a target audience such that you get a genuine uh, response for certain features you want to launch? That's good. That's a good question, actually. Um, let me just click on my screen here. Okay, cool. So for that, there's so many potential confounding variables, and that, that's what you were um, thinking of, right? You have to look at which confounding variables are the largest and eliminate them or control for them. That's a statistical term, right? A term control for those variables that could potentially mess up your experiment. Let's say you're Jeremy with the Snapchat filters and you, you want to, um, we could talk about like, you know, um, targeted launching or we could talk about user interviews, which is what you were talking about, right? Interviews. He wants to interview um, people in a way that's not biased. He realizes that 80% of Snapchat users are high schoolers, right? And then 20% are other. So, out of like, out of a hundred people, he would want to interview 80 high schoolers and then 20 other, right? So keeping that there is important, right? And then he would want to make sure that um, a really big confounding variable and, and just and all, across all products is location. People think very difficult, differently than the, the West Coast versus the East Coast, right? So he wants to make sure that he has like out of those um, 80 uh, high schoolers, 50 from like the West coast, 15 on the East coast, but that's still, that's still a little biased. So it basically just randomly makes sure that they're from all across the United States, if not the whole world. Right. So, um, that, that's a way that you can control for the factors. You need to identify which factors are going to be the most confusing and confounding. And then you need to make sure that that's not a problem anymore because those factors are not taken into account because, um, let's say the factor is, a, um, age, right. Make sure you have people of all ages, right. Factors, location, people of all locations, right. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty important, right? Uh, of course, you don't want to focus on locations in which you have no users. Snapchat has like no people under like 10. You don't want to interview like sub, like less than 10 year olds, although that'd be illegal anyways, but you see what I'm saying? So that's, that's the note that I want to leave everyone on. Thank you so much for having me.